On headset. Get him, brother. Let's have a good one. Boys, Michael, let's have a good one. Yeah. I stand by my hunt. Yeah. Um, confirming I still have to get the coach's intros. Confirm. Okay. I still need to get the intros. That's all I need, correct? Yeah, as we predicted after when he stepped in prior to game two that he had the ability to run the table. Yeah, yeah. We'll bang it out 15 seconds. <laughs> Any fog is gone. Toasty today in this jacket. Showtime. Jacket, I'm staying warm today. It's too cold out here. Say, I, I got that safe for the post game interviews. I got that safe for the post game interviews. Yeah. When you're saying you want them, you want them. Not it's in race up against the boards. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so not on these. Pull the guys away and get them up against the boards. Okay. 
Got it. Okay, I understand. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Here we go, Stevie. Here we go, boys. Have a good show. It's a rematch of last year's final. Team Canada won 4-3 in a thriller. Welcome to TSN's continuing coverage of the 2016 Spengler Cup, the 90th edition. This is the oldest invitational club team tournament in the world. Team Canada joining in 1984 and has won 13 titles so far. But coming down the wing, Dario Bergler, 31 seconds in, one nothing Lugano. I think that shot a tremendous shot for Burglar. We saw him score a roof shot yesterday in their victory as well against Davos. Burglar, a high scoring right winger, He's had 20, two 20 goal seasons in the Swiss League, his second of this tournament. An absolute rocket over the glove, and you'll see it here. The nice long stretch pass coming from Lugano. Here's Burglar, 87, the slap shot just at the top of the circle. You can see he just caught Fucali. Shot to the outside of the glove right here. Short side, but an excellent slap shot right here from number 87, Dario Bruggen. The, the puck may actually have touched the stick of Shea Genoa. 14 goals, 25 points on the year for the 11-year veteran. Doug, what are your hunches now for this game? one nothing, Lugano. I still believe that the winner of last night's semi-final between Minsk and Canada was going to be the team that ends up hoisting the 2016 Spengler Cup. I think Team Canada will continue to improve today. This will be a different club that Lugano faces. And finally, I have a lot of faith that Zach Fucali will be the goaltender that was able to run the table the way we identified after game two. Bergler, who scored that goal, posted back-to-back 20-goal -back seasons in the Swiss A League in 2012 and 2013. Those seasons, of course, with Davos, the team they beat yesterday in the semi-final 4-0. I'm Steve Coolius in the broadcast booth. Doug Honiger, who represented Switzerland at the 1992 Olympic Games, played for Davos, played for Lugano. This really is more than just a tournament, Doug. It's a special, special event. Well, right, and it starts with the fact of the time of year, right? Obviously, during the Christmas period, everybody's in a real festive mood. You combine it with the location. You can't ask for a more beautiful place to have a hockey tournament than Davos, Switzerland. Obviously, the competition on the ice, which every year just continues to get better. It's one to nothing for Lugano. Going in, was Canada the clear-cut favorite or a slight favorite in your mind? I, they're definitely the favorite coming into this game, but I'm going to side on, on slight favorite, Steve. I think we see this Davos Hockey Cup. They're going to be well prepared. They know what they're facing in Canada, although they think Canada is a favorite only by a small margin. You will recognize many names in this tournament for Canada. Raymond, Campbell, Shepard, Spalding, Pouliot, all with NHL experience. On the Lugano side, James Wisniewski only played one game last year because of that knee injury. Max Lapierre, over 600 games in the NHL. Famous for being a Montreal Canadian. Luke Richardson, the head coach of Team Canada. Doug Shedden, former NHLer, the head coach of Lugano. So a lot of Big NHL names in this tournament, Doug, as Lugano has a one to nothing lead. As Team Canada brings it in. On the power play, far side, Mason Raymond in after the puck. He's there with Philip Fuhr. Comes to Corey Emerton. 
He has the goal in this tournament, and it was a shorthanded marker. Freeman gets it over for no row in front of the net, tipping that one. Andrew Ebbett gets a stick on it, but it's corralled here. Kept in by Team Canada. Nice play by Andrew Ebbett. Over to Mason Raymond, pinching in Mark Flood, but the puck comes out to center. Well, Cannon almost gifted a beautiful opportunity there with 91. Julian Walker was unable to clear the zone. Canada still having difficulty, apart from that getting established in the offensive zone here on their first power play of the game. If this is your first game of the 2016 Spengler Cup, and we'd like to welcome those watching on the NHL Network in the United States. Penalties, power plays have been the story. There's been a lot of stick infractions, a lot of whacking and tapping, Doug. Absolutely, and there's been zero tolerance in this tournament. We've talked about it many, many times throughout the tournament. The slashings and the hookings in particular, they're being called, they're very strict, very strict. That's the word coming down from the organizing committee. They want to see hockey. They don't want to see guys hooking and holding. Under 30 seconds to go on Canada's power play. One to nothing, Lugano, as Dario Bergler scored the goal 31 seconds in. With the chance to win his club's first ever Spengler Cup, Lugano head coach Doug Shedden thinks the key to winning will be special teams. We approach the three minute mark here of the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. It all began outside in 1923. They took it inside in 1978. Team Canada gets it inside the Lugano zone. Francis Paré, who's played well, gets it to Mark Antoine Pouliot, the former first round pick of the Oilers. Going back to 2003. Puck is corralled by Max Lapierre. He dumps it in. The penalty is over. Canada 0 for 1 on the power play. Early goal by Bergler. Has this a 1 0 score? Absolutely, and that's an ideal start for Lugano. You want to create momentum off the get go, and no better way to do that than to score on your first shift. Face off to the right of Zach Fucali, playing the East Coast this year, 21 years of age. Second round pick of the Montreal Canadiens going back to 2013. He does have a ton of international and big game experience. Has won a Memorial Cup championship. He is one of Ivan Holinka tournament, the best U18 teams playing in August overseas. And of course, the World Juniors two years ago for the sparkling goals against the average of 949. But comes to Colby Genoway. He lets a shot go that ricochets into the corner. Here's Gregory Campbell, former Boston Bruins Stanley Cup champion with the Bees. Back in 2011, had a clear year that year with 29 points as Boston beat Vancouver in seven thrilling games to end their Stanley Cup drought. Here's Nick Spalding near side, the former Nashville Predator with a shot right on. There's Lickens to save, loose puck in front. Jamming away there was McIntyre, but he couldn't put it in. Back comes Alessandro Bertaggia in front of the net. A chance for Gardner as Steve Hershey plows into the net and we get a whistle on the play. With a chance to win their third Spengler Cup in five years, we asked Team Canada head coach Luke Richardson what his team needs to do to win it all. Luke Richardson played 1,417 games in the NHL, doing a great job with his veteran bench staff. Doug, so far in this tournament, as they have to reinsert the orange plastic peg in the area to my right and your left. But Luke has NHL and AHL coaching experience. And he's done a fine months. job with Team Canada this time. Absolutely, has. he's such a fine person. That's the word that's coming back from all the players that I've spoke to about the quality of the man. And you mentioned the good staff that he has surrounding him. Gordy Dwyer, 
coaching here in Europe in the KHL, the world's second best league with Zagreb and Dave King. I mean, what more can we say about Dave King? He's done so much for Canadian hockey experience and he's been a real addition to Luke Richardson who obviously has amazing amounts of experience as a player and a coach in North America, not as much internationally. Certainly benefits by having those two with huge European experience alongside him on the bench. Offside is the call at the Team Canada line. It's just after 6 a.m. in Toronto and New York City. Just after 3 a.m. in Vancouver and Seattle. We hope you're enjoying this game wherever you are. The World Juniors going on. Outstanding NHL action. And now our 11th and a final game in five and a half days at the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. We're in the Vail Ant Arena. And for those who don't know this building, Doug, it's quite a facility, charm, and great atmosphere. And it's referred to as the Cathedral of Hockey here for obvious reasons, made out of wood, and it's like a church. Here's McIntyre looking for Rehm, and that doesn't work. There's a shot fired from the far side by Sean Heska that goes all the way up down the ice. Picked up on the near side by Mason Rehm, and 25 goals for Vancouver back in 2010. He'll be our first intermission guest. Under 15 minutes to play here. Period number one. Great chance in front for Andrew Evan, but he deflects it over the glass. Here's a look at Doug Shedd, his team in the 12 team Swiss National A League, sixth overall this year. Under 500, trying to use the Spengler Cup as a springboard in the second half success. In the league last year, they lost the championship final after losing to Canada in the Spengler. And he knows a thing or two about coaching and playing over 400 games in the NHL Cup. And led Canada to a Spengler Cup victory as well. So a little bit of a bittersweet afternoon for Coach Shedden, coaching Lugano, but obviously against his beloved Team Canada. Was an offensive player in the NHL. Pittsburgh, Toronto, Detroit, and Quebec. The Battle of Quebec rivalry has him ready for the battle against Davos. We saw that last night. Here's Spalling, spinning and firing. It goes off Ryan Wilson, the former Colorado Avalanche, playing number five for Lugano in white. Canada in red. With the black and white trim. There's a shot tipped in front and scores! At the side of the net, Shane Genoway, and we're tied at one. Yeah, and keep an eye on 89, Christy Dominic, who made this play happen. Just a wonderful, look at him straddling the blue line right here. And then the shot on goal, you're gonna see Genoway right here coming in, number five, the rebound comes just over to the right to him. I don't think Merzlikens did a great job handling it right here. Corey Emerton, 25, may have got his stick on it as well. But watch, this is a smart play by Genoway. Watch, the puck came to a stick. Presence of mind to make sure that he got elevation with the puck over the pad of Merzlikens. He's gonna to wanna to have that one back because that was not a good rebound. Elvis Merzlikens was the story of last year's tournament. Signed a big contract. Remember, he's Columbus Blue Jacket property. Drafted by them in 2014. Last year, 929 save percentage. This year, dipping to 909. Didn't handle, as you mentioned, that rebound well. Does glove this puck. So both goalies, Elvis Merzlikens, number 30, and Zach Fucali, also number 30. They almost get to restart this game now, 1-1, about seven minutes in. And you're right, and look at this play by Di Domenico, right on the blue, and the puck just in, probably by an inch, not more. Low to the net, and you talk about it so often, right? The high low. And the rebound comes right out here to number five, Genoway, and just to take that extra second to make sure he gets elevation on the puck. Shade Genoway, 30 years of age from Manitoba. His brother, Colby Genoway, both went to the University of North Dakota. Shea, with one game of NHL experience, now playing for Yokerit which is also in the 2019 KHL, which expanded to China this year. That's something we discussed after 40 minutes in Davos yesterday. As we approach the seven minute mark of a 1-1 game, it's been a high scoring tournament. Haare thought he was perhaps the extra skater on the ice for too many men right in front of you. He jumped over that 
like a high jumper at the Montreal Olympics. Absolutely, that was a smart play by Parr that recognized that he was the extra man out there and quickly got himself off the ice. Here's Gregory Campbell. He has Parry in front of the net. Comes to Steve Hershey, the big veteran defenseman, 35 years of age. Up to Toronto native, number 51, Ryan Gardner. In over the line, Rattagia, he can shoot the puck, does. Stopped by Fucali. Juggled it just a little bit, Doug, but Canada clears the zone. He did put a nice job of the Team Canada defenseman. Took that loose puck in a nice exit pass out of the zone. Here's James Shepard, almost 400 games of NHL experience. Drafted ninth overall by the Minnesota Wild back in 2006. His second year in Switzerland. Hailed from Halifax, Nova Scotia, where they're also up early this morning. It's breakfast in Davos for many parts of Canada and the United States as we approach the eight minute mark of a 1-1 hockey game. Dario Burglar for Lugano. And moments ago, Shea Genoa for Team Canada. Here's Mason Raymond. Over 500 NHL games under his belt. How big is the biggest factor in your mind as we watch this game here today? I think it's considerable because we've heard so much talk about it around this tournament. There's a lot of players with NHL aspirations that are certainly keeping an eye on Vegas. And we saw last year the Spengler Cup springboard factor, whether it's coaches, Boucher, management, McPhee, there's a shot. Steered aside nicely by his, his Lickens and he will cover up. And of course, many players as well who use the Spengler Cup to get to the National Hockey League. Good start, boys. I can't believe they started the game five minutes early. I know, I know. Welcome back to the Vail Ants Arena here in Davos, Switzerland. The tradition continues that is the Spengler Cup. Power play, Lugano coming up. Canada will get a slashing penalty, I believe. It's going to be number five, the goal scorer, Shea Genoa. And Lugano has the man advantage. And here's the slash. There's actually a couple of slashes right there from Genoa. You saw Max Lapierre right here. But a drive towards the net. Genoa keeping him at a distance. Unfortunately, those two slashes result in a minor penalty being called. Canada 0 for 1 on the power play. Here's Lugano's first power play. They scored just like that, 31 seconds in. Dario Burglar, shocking Team Canada, their fans here in attendance. And even Zach Fucali, but Canada got that one back. Shea Genoa, he's got a goal. He's now in the box as Linus Klassen gets it near side for James Wisniewski. 32 years of age, hailing from Michigan, 500 plus NHL games under his belt. The knee is healed. 47 second shift last year, first game and the season was over. Here's a shot by Wisniewski, screening in front of the net, nice to Tony Martinson. Burglar in the corner, being watched by Big Dan Vukovic, comes to the near side to Linus Klassen. 10 goals and 36 points so far this year, sporting a Joe Thornton type beard. There's a shot from the slot by Ryan BC. Vukali snags that with the left glove. And that was a tremendous save. They're setting it up. You keep an eye on BC right here. Set up perfectly. Bought himself a little bit of time. Found the space right there. The quick wrist shot of Fucali easily handling it with the glove save. 21 year old Montreal Canadian second round pick. Settling in in a Canadian crease as we approach the halfway minute mark. Here's Ryan Wilson. Former Avalanche lets it go loose in front. It was actually up in the air. Fucali didn't know where it was. Spinning and firing is Gregory Hoffman, who's been strong for Doug Shedden so far this tournament. He really is. And keep an eye on 51 in white. Ryan Gardner is going to be looking for Netflix presence there. Here's McIntyre. Two on two break. Right in on goal. Elvis Merzlikens juggling that one as Canada gets an excellent shorthanded chance. That was a smart move by McIntyre. He recognized when he came down to the one and watch this. He's playing against Hoffman, the forward. You can see how disorganized Hoffman looks right there. Certainly not a position he's used to being, and I like the way McIntyre recognized that, took advantage of it. And then Merz Lickens making the acrobatic save. 
The action fast and furious here at the Spengler Cup. Obviously, ice surface is one answer. What are some of the other differences between NHL hockey and this tournament in your mind, Doug? I think the first thing is the lack of physicality, right? On the big rink, we don't see anywhere near the amount of hitting that we're seeing in North America. And I think the big rink has a lot to do with the cultural differences of the, the way the teams play has a lot to do with that as well. There's a lot more handling the puck again because the rink affords that. BC and over the line, leaves it for line is Klassen. Back to the point to Wisniewski. Back here, right wing circle for Klassen. BC touch pass, Wisniewski shot tipped in front. And boy, Fucali had to be sharp because Tony Martinson got a piece of that one. Right, Tony Martinson, net front presence, a key for this Canadian style coach team with Doug Chin. And just to finish that thought, Steve, the other area is on the power play because of the width of the rink. You're gonna see teams really playing, stretching things out, passing, and they're looking for more of what we would call the perfect shot opportunity, rather than what we're used to in North America, which is down low, bring the puck back to the blue one, and then crash it. Here, there's a lot more patience and a lot more setup with the puck. Penalty time winding down to Genoway. Class and slap pass, looking for the high Henrik Daniel tip. It didn't work, and the penalty to Genoway is over. As we approach the 11 minute mark, there's a deflection in front by Martinson. Just went wide to the far side, so Lugano 0 for 1 on the power play. Team Canada doing a pretty good job of killing that one off. They really did, and you can see now Zach Fucali settling in in the Canadian goal as well. Puck comes near side for Blake Parlay. In over the line to James Shepard, lets a shot go. Merz Licken steers it off the glass, it ricocheted out in front where Klassen Gloves it down and starts the rush. Near side for Alessandro Chiesa. Gets it up for Max Lapierre. Swallowed there by Fucali, making sure there's no rebound and it's not. And there's a good shot of number 89, Christy Domenico, who's been just tremendous for this Team Canada. Corey Emerton, number 25, another real good veteran presence on a real, real strong roster in this year's Spangler Cup. We started with six teams. We're down to two. Mountfield, Czech Republic, Yekaterinburg, KHL, Davos from Switzerland. All had excellent tournaments. Minsk, but they've all been eliminated as we're down to a rematch of last year's final. Here's a chance in front of the net. Oh, what a save by Elvis Merz Lickens. It looked like he was actually out of position, but Paré was robbed from in front. And you see Francis Paré, 40 right here. Look at him. I love that. Grabbed it with his hand, seamless motion right down to the blade. You're going to see it right here. Takes it with his right hand. Watch how quickly he gets it onto the blade and the back end. And you're right, Merz Lickens was going to his left, but quickly adjusted, was able to make the save with his right pad. Andrew Ebbett from Vernon, BC on the draw. Never drafted. Went to the University of Michigan. Spent over 200 games with six different NHL teams. There definitely is an NHL collect connection here at this tournament, mostly, of course, with Team Canada. Absolutely. Luke Richardson told me on a couple of occasions how well number 19 Andrew Ebbett has performed for this year's club. Puck comes to Mason Raymond in his own zone. Gets the return feed from Vukovic. Near side for Pouliot. He was looking for his man, Di Domenico, who's been quiet so far today. Wilson gets it back in. Gormley gets it back out. Here's Mark Antoine pulling up with a shot. Right pad save by Elvis Merz Lickens, the Columbus draft pick. Back to the point. Max Noro, keep an eye on him. He has three goals so far in this event. The captain for Team Canada, very noticeable as that shot. Planks off the side of the net. Here's Max Noro again towards the net. Comes to the near side to Gormley, the 24 year old from Prince Edward Island. And a shout out to all of those in PEI and everywhere else across the country who are having Spengler Cup parties this morning. I know Caesars were flowing early before puck drop at 6 a.m. Eastern time. And I've been getting messages from those in British Columbia. And I think it's not Caesar time yet, Steve. They're still finishing last night's cocktails. That shot by Emerton goes off the left shoulder of Elvis Merz Lickens. A lot of pucks towards the net. The fancy stat analytics guys will be busy here. There's a lot of shot attempts here in Spengler Cup hockey. And of course, a lot of goals, especially when pucks are brought in courtesy of controlled zone entries. 
Here's one right now. Corey Emerton stood up there nicely by Chiesa, who's an all-purpose defenseman for Doug Shed. Giveaway to Mason Raymond. Has it. Right wing circle. Curling to the blue line. Not out. Let's a shot go. Blocked by Klassen. Comes to Blake Parlett. He gets it in deep. Canada controlling the play now. Mason Raymond, three goals in the tournament, out in front. Goes off Parlett skates. Corralled here easily by Wilson, and the threat is over. Nice job, Lugano. Always maintain their position in front of the goal. Never the classic bend but not break scenario defensively. Canada with most of the puck control, but unable to get a good shot on goal. Here's David McIntyre with a shot blocked in front of the net. As it goes off, Heinrich skates. Back the other way, too far for a streaking Raphael Sanitz. Icing is the call. This game is coming to you live from Davos, Switzerland. Great job, Doug. Great job, Dougie. Great ah, job, everybody. Man. Nice start. What's all these texts here? Let me read the latest. Welcome back to TSN's continuing coverage of the oldest invitational club tournament in the world, known as the Spengler Cup. It's tournament time all over the world. World Juniors in Toronto and Montreal, Spengler Cup here. And of course, thrilling NHL action. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are as Zach Fucali makes the save, pokes it forward. And former Minnesota Wild, James Shepard, corrals the puck and gets it in. Dan Vukovic wearing the cage in on the forecheck there to the defenseman. Puck comes to Francis Paré, part of the Team Croatia connection on Team Canada. We'll get to that in a moment. There's a shot. Parlet with a great chance denied by Elvis Merzlikens with under five to play. Back to the point. Mark Kadic with it now. Gets it in there for Christy Minico. He couldn't handle the loose puck, but it stays in as Steve Hershey couldn't get it out. Pouliot lets a shot go, save, loose in front. And there once again, number seven, Blake Parlett, scooting in from the right point. Jacob McFlicker looking for Dita Minico, the former Toronto Maple Leaf draft pick. It comes down the ice once again to Hoffman. Hoffman with a shot. That was a sharp pad save by Zach Fucali, and he covers up. Well, that was a quick shot. Fucali had to be alert on that. Quick, pull it back in a quick shot from Hoffman. Roth right there, tried to use parlay as a screen, but a really nice shot by 15 and White, but Canada with some excellent opportunities at the other end. Pouliot and Blake Parlett doing an excellent job activating himself from the Team Canada by Blue Line. A real mobile guy who loves to jump into the rush. 38-year-old Toronto native on the faceoff, Ryan Gardner. 20 years pro, played with London and North Bay. In the Ontario Hockey League, he's Cor here's Corey Emerton on the backhand, the former Detroit Red Wing. That's right on, and we go from one end to the other in another very fast first period of Spengler Cup hockey. And I like this play right here from 25. Emerton, look, look at how he crossed through the neutral zone right there, then came into the slot and used Wisniewski 93 as a screen. Smart, smart play by the Team Canada center. Group. Faceoff is controlled by Lugano. Another nice faceoff win for Ryan Gardner, a specialist in the faceoff circle. A la a Yannick Perot, or like the late great Peter Zezel. So efficient in the circle, like Johnny Taves of the modern day version of NHL hockey. Looked like Lugano had too many white sweaters on the ice there, Doug, right in front of you. Is that the case? They absolutely did. Absolutely did. Seven on the ice. You could hear Team Canada's bench calling for that too many men on the ice penalty. Faceoff comes, or the puck comes back to Philip Tierer inside the faceoff circle in his own zone. Out comes Ryan Vesey. Cross corner dump in. Martinson with a one timer. Save Fucali, and then Vesey gets it back. Boyd Harbor, New York native, BC gets it in for Klassen. The bearded 86 gets it back to the point. Hershey near side to Almer, back to Klassen, too far. Martinson centers it, 
tried to find BC, but instead a sea of red as Canada regains the puck in their own zone. Under three to go here in period number one. Good pace, Doug. Tied at one. And it really has turned into a bit of a chess game right now because both teams, you can see, respect one another. Not a lot of chances. Tight, tight defensively, particularly when it's in front of their respective goals. Puck up, ends up on the stick of Paré down the wing. Paré with a shot and making the stop. Merzlikens knocks the net off. And I think on that rush by Francis Paré, James Wisniewski is going to be called for hooking. He is in parlays. You can see right here, par rate number 40 for Canada. Been skating really well. Just had a bit of a, maybe one step on Wisniewski. You'll see Wisniewski gets the stick up. Nearly recognized that he was going to be called. But a nice job of 40 in red. He's really skating well here in the first period for Team Canada. Wisniewski, Lapierre, Shedden names. You will recognize, of course, and faces on the piano side. Raymond, Campbell, Shepard, Spalding, Pouliot. Many of the names that you know from the NHL on Team Canada. 2-12 to go in the period. Pouliot on the faceoff. Bounces in the air and almost bounces into the net courtesy of a Team Canada stick in front. But Merzlikens got his right pad on it as here's Chris Domenico to Max Noro, who quarterbacks the power play. Canada set up in the 1-3-1 as it comes to Pouliot. He thinks about shooting. And passes to Dita Minico. Up top for Max Noro. There's a shot. Merzlikens the save. Gardner tries to get it out. He can't. Lapierre, second try, and he does. And that's the play for Team Canada. Puck back to Noro on the blue end. You see how well 7 8 Puglia always in front. Great net front presence on Canada's power play. Max Noro, 29 years of age from Montreal, played a little bit with the Minnesota Wild, if you remember back in 2009 to 2011. He's done very well here in the Swiss League and with Burns. Remember, Team Canada form with Canadians playing on respective club teams that are not in the tournament. So Ryan Gardner, who's playing in the game, of course, for Lugano, wouldn't be eligible to play on Team Canada. We saw that with Matt Ellison, who's in this tournament, of course, for Minsk, but played on Team Canada last year, Doug, and won the championship. Absolutely, and now this is a new Team Canada, but many of the same veterans back again looking to defend their championship. Here's a chance for Mason Raymond trying to go short side shelf. But Elvis Merzlikens would have nothing to do with that with 46 seconds to go. Those Merzlikens did a nice job coming across. He cut the angle down. Raymond was looking for the high shelf, but really nothing there to shoot for. And there you're going to see that there's, there's two sets of initials right there in the number 15. There's two Swiss gentlemen, Andy Huber and Marcel Angerly, who have been part of this Team Canada group here at the Spangle Cup, and they're celebrating their 15th anniversary with the team. And team Canada would like to consecutive years with this team, and now would like to give some acknowledgement of another example of the class of Hockey Canada. Well said, my friend, well said, and you've played in this tournament. The crowd, the atmosphere, the rink here, it is a special time. We play early here, Championship Saturday, so everyone can get home and celebrate New Year's Eve at home, right? Absolutely, absolutely. It's one of the one of the one of the beautiful traditions of this event. Here's Mason Raymond. 20 seconds to go in the period. Genoway with a shot, loose in front. Corey Emerson behind the net. To Mason Raymond as the penalty to Wisniewski is now over. Andrew Ebbett back to Mason Raymond in front of the net, steered aside by Chiesa. Picked up by Chiesa, he gets it out. There's the horn, and a very entertaining first period comes to a close with the score, Doug, tied at one. This is a game between such evenly matched teams, a real, real tight period here. I don't think there was really any quarter given by either team. Get ready for a really big one in the second period, and I'm telling you right now, Max LaPierre, the slash on Genoa towards the end of the period, I think is gonna rise the temperature up here a little bit here going into the second period. Shots on goal, 19-12 in favor of Team Canada. Game tied 1-1. You're watching the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup live here from Davos. We'll be back.
Back on headset up top here. One period in the books. Uh, I did not. Did you see that picture? The other one? Oh, it's awesome, that picture. You have more equipment on. Yes. Big picture question is, what happens to this tournament next year if the NHLers are not going to the Olympics? Am I correct in that assumption? You are. Yeah, I'm not gonna say all that, but that's the, that's the gist of it, yes. Yes, very good. Excellent work in the truck. Nice work, you Douglas. Keep going, you little rat. Welcome back to TSN's continuing coverage of the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. We're about to begin period number two of the championship final. Team Canada in red against Lugano. Swiss A-League team in white. 31 seconds in, Dario Burgler scored. And then Shea Genoway tied it for Team Canada. Courtesy of the Spengler Cup television network, this broadcast is being seen in 40 countries around the world. Of course, on TSN in Canada, coast to coast. And we'd like to welcome our viewers watching on the NHL Network in the United States. I'm Steve Coolius, Doug Honiger between the benches. Pretty good start, Doug. Another pretty good start. You bet. Two evenly matched teams. You could really see the game ramped up a notch in the last 10 minutes. A little bit of tension as well from Max Lapierre. Number 25 got things going. I think you're going to see that carry over here into the second. Jacob McFlicker hammers one from the top of the left wing circle. Elvis Merz Lickens, the 
Columbus Blue Jacket draft pick back in 2014, third round, makes a nice stop. And that's how he wants to start the second period, a similar situation at the start of the first. For him, he gave up that goal, it allowed Canada to get back into the game. Here he makes a big save early on in the period, a great confidence builder for the Lugano goalie. James Wisniewski, our second intermission guest, has the puck behind the net. The veteran of over 500 NHL games, power play specialist with that bomb. And Doug, we've seen that bomb so far here be successful in this tournament. Absolutely, scored for team Lugano, he plays on their blue line, anchors their first unit power play, made his name in the National Hockey League with his big shot, and that's what they're expecting from him on this Lugano team here in the tournament. Puck is chipped into Team Canada territory. Zach Fucali to the captain, Max Noro, up to Jacob McFlicker to Chris Dinamico. In over the line, cuts to the middle. Dinamico lets a shot go, tipped in front. McFlicker scores! Side of the net for Mark Antoine Pouliot. 59 seconds in, Canada makes it a 2-1 hockey game. And it's Pouliot again, it's right in front of that. This is where he makes his living. Second goal of the tournament, the ideal way for Canada to start the second period, a goal within the first minute. And it's 89 again with the puck, skating around. He's so patient with the puck. McFlicker throws it across. You're gonna see Elvis not sure. Elvis Merz Lickett's in the goal, not sure the puck goes off. 78 Pouliot, but another job of 89. Holding on the puck, holding on to it, buying time. Watch right here. Elvis Merz Lickett slides across, the puck goes through his crease. He would like to have had his stick out there to intercept it rather than pull it back and then pull it out right on the side of the post. Just tapped it home for Lugano, excuse me, Team Canada's second. 2-1 for Team Canada. Mark Antoine Pouliot, 31 years of age, Quebec native. First pick, 22nd overall back in the 03 draft for the Edmonton Oilers. Almost 200 games in the league with Edmonton, Tampa, and the Coyotes. His fifth year overseas as we get a stoppage there. And Let's be honest, I don't know if the spin around pass was intended for Pouliot. It ended up on his stick and there we are again crossing the Royal Road or the slot line and it makes it so difficult for goalies to cover the puck when it goes from one side of the net to the other. And you're right, that puck may have gone to him inadvertently, Steve, but the important thing is where you're going. If you notice all three guys driving in the net, even after the pass from Diaminico goes to the net, McFlicker 71 goes to the net, Pouliot 78 off the post. That's where goals are scored, and that's how you get them. Smart play by 78, and as a result, puts Canada up by one here early on in the second period. There's a shot by Linus Klassen. He was bringing the puck in, waiting momentarily to get some support in front of the net. He was looking for deflection, but he didn't get it, at least not a deflection on goal. No, and that's the issue that I have with 86 in white. Klassen is a highly skilled player, but too often he pulls up. He's got a real good shot. He's got pretty deceptive speed, moves laterally really well, but rarely does he use any of those skills to create his own shot. 30 years of age from Stockholm, Sweden. He's sporting the Joe Thornton, Brent Burns playoff beard here as that shot by Hoffman is easily clubbed. Did you wear a beard in your playing days, either in the queue or in Switzerland? I have a hard time growing facial hair, so the answer is <laughs> it's a pretty easy no. Whereas myself, sometimes I feel like I have to shave twice a day. We've played almost 90 seconds. Here's another chance for Hoffman, but he's filled in by Shepard after he let that shot go off the face-off circle. Gregory Hoffman, the former Carolina Hurricane pick, gets it to Dario Bergler, who opened the scoring 31 seconds in and shocked Team Canada. Puck is knocked down by Paré and then shot to center by Campbell. Here's Paré with it again. Paré, sharp angle. Tried to squeeze that one between Merzlikens in the post, but he hit the side of the net. Shepard hard to the net, Ryan Wilson. Six years in the NHL with Colorado, got a stick in front of that one. The band playing on here at the Valant Arena. Harlett with a shot, that's blocked. And Three on two comes Lugano the other way. Genoa hustling back. That's what we call modern day back pressure to turn a three on two into a three on three offside. And, then, and what that back pressure does is it allows the defense to step up. In, in that case, creates the offside. You see right here the key on face off. How important are the draws? It's a great scene of it right now. But twice to the right of Zach Fucali, Lugano winning the puck back at both times. Number 15, Hoffman. Two good scoring chances from the slot. Off of the direct win on the face off. 
Here's a look at legendary coach Dave King, who's coached in the NHL. Senior advisor here to Luke Richardson, and of course, longtime head coach of Hockey Canada. His first Olympics for Canada, Sarajevo, Pat Flatley and company back in 1984. Elvis Merz-Lickens gets run into there and trying to plead his case is number four, Colby Genoway. But I think he's going to get a goaltender interference penalty. He'll argue he was pushed. And let's see the pictures to determine if he has a case. Well, he is absolutely going to be called for the goalie interference. Merz-Lickens is still down on the ice. Respectful of Genoway to check on him briefly to make sure that everything was okay. But nevertheless, he will be going off for two minutes for the goalie interference. You can see it right here. He drives right in. There's no doubt about it. Difficult for him to slow down. Four, number seven, may have given him a push from behind. But nevertheless, watch him going hard on Merz Lickens. And in this tournament, they're calling all goalie interference. And now number four for Canada goes off for two minutes. Whether it's here in Europe or going back to the National Hockey League, only Gary Roberts, to me, made a conscious effort of walking the tightrope, maybe Holmstrom as well in Detroit, and then showing the official, look, I'm trying to get out of the way. When you do and show an effort, it could buy you a break in front of the net. But as you just said, the pictures there do not lie. Lugano, power play, there's a shot, side of the net, Burglar! Oh my goodness, how did that stay out, Doug? Oh, absolutely, the puck came in from Klaassen, 86 on the blue one. Burglar, 87, just to the right of Fucali, looked like he had the tying goal on Here's his Here's Emerton, scores! Corey Emerton, short-handed. Canada now leads, it's three to one. And this is what so often happens in this game. You get a great scoring chance at one end and then the puck goes right back to the other. And here's the shot coming in from Clausen. You see it right here, 86. And now watch Burglar. It looks like he's got it right there. Real nice job of Sean Heskett, 26 in red, just to get a stick and skate in there to prevent it. Watch Corey Emerton, 25 here. Solo out of the zone, comes in. And this is an advantage that you have right here. When you have a defenseman and a forward, you'll see 93 was Newski, 86 Clausen. Watch him take advantage of it. Dances Clausen right there. And then the backhand, or a tricky one for Lickens to stop. You'll see it a hard backhand. Took him five hole, but a really smart play again by Emerton. Identifying the forward alongside Wisniewski, went right at him, dance him, and then put the backhand between the legs of Merzlikens for a shorthander for Team Canada. 28 years of age, Corey Emerton from St. Thomas, Ontario. His second shorthanded goal of the tournament. A draft pick of the Red Wings in 06. I'm at the rink the other day. The drill is to flip the puck over the stick to yourself. I'll finish that story in just a moment. Two on one. Here is Campbell. Stopped. Loose puck. Elvis Merz-Lickens makes the save as Gregory Campbell and James Shepard in a two on one. Canada almost scoring another shorthanded goal. And watch Shepard. He looked off. That was a good effort right there because he had a left-handed shot coming down on the right-hand side, so the one-timer situation was right there. Watch the slide pass from Shepard, and I like that he follows up, but the puck handcuffed him. You can see it right here. Burglar came back, put some pressure on Shepard, 88 in red. The puck just handcuffed him. Otherwise, he would have had Canada's fourth. The Corey Emerton shorthanded goal was his second shorty. And remember, everything around the play, around the net, is always reviewed. It's up to the referees if they say, you know what? We want a longer look at this. And apparently now, under the request, I do believe, of Dan Vukovic, number 55, here comes the captain, Max Noro, now. I was, hey, Kiesa, you want the right call being made? On the ice, no ball. No. Hey, you're having a really good game. Really good, really good. I love the way you step into the play. Doug, do you think this one crossed the line? You know, from that angle that we saw right there, initially I would have answered no, and I've been asked by a couple of players here on the bench that didn't go in. My first thought was no, but that one looked awfully close. It looked like the puck might have actually squirted over the line. 
The Toronto Situation Room, as no goal is called, is situated right there. So the referees jump in, get the call, and go back. There is no overhead, per se, as we have in the 30 and soon to be 31 NHL ranks. And I think that's the right call. Canada just wanted a second look, and they get their second look and lead this hockey game now 3-1. to one. Corey Emerton with a short-handed goal. Great individual effort. And the skill I was talking about is flipping the puck over a stick and practice to yourself. Why would you ever do that? You'll never do it in a game. Well, that type of confidence led to Emerton actually flipping the puck up to himself as it's launched down the ice, and then he scores. So you can dump it in, or you can make a play. And Corey Emerton made a super skill play. You can see Lugano, you can see things starting to go off the rails for them. Really sloppy, obviously taking a shorthanded goal against a sloppy setup here in the first minute as well. And watch Hoffman right here, hooks Vukovic. Again, we're always talking about these penalties deep in the offensive zone. What's the point on this? Come in, just ride him off into the boards, but instead the stick gets caught up with Vukovic. And as a result, number 15, Gregory Hoffman going off for two minutes. So in 53 seconds, Canada, without another penalty, will have an abbreviated power play. But now we get four on four hockey. And this game is dangerously close, Doug, to being blown open by the team in red and white. Genoa to the captain, Max Noro. The straw that stirs the drink for Team Canada. But back comes Lugano the other way. Genoa, great back check not to take a penalty and to knock the puck away. Kept in by Dario Burglar on the far side. Gets it into Alessandro Chiesa to line his classic. Chiesa walks the line, waiting for an angle, trying to change the angle. Gets his pocket picked here by Andrew Ebbett. He tried to spring number 21, Mason Raymond, but it didn't work. No, and Andrew Ebbett, 19, doing a great job. He forced Chiesa into that turnover on the blue line. Out of the box comes Genoa, Colby Genoa, the brother of Shea Genoa, who has a goal here in the game. Here's Max Lapierre on the backhand, gloved by Fucali. He wants to keep the play going, and he does. As we approach the five-minute mark of period number two, under a minute to go in the minor penalty to number 15, Gregory Hoffman. Pouliot gets it back to the point. Wanting the puck, getting the puck is Mark Flood. Into Gormley. Far side for Pouliot. In deep for Didominico. He's got McFlicker in front of the net. Flood back door. Didominico. Saucer pass to Gormley. Near side for Flood with a shot. Merzlikens makes the save and hangs on. And Merzlikens made the save, but what did we see once again? It's the stack in front of the net. Here's 78. Here's 71. McFlicker and Pouliot exactly where he is all the time on the power play, straight in front of the opposing goaltender. I know you're a man of many languages. You're one of the most interesting men in the world. Can you tell me what that says? Concentration, patience, Pizzo. Pizzo. calmness. Pizzo. Well Thank done, you. my friend. Well done. 14.37 to go, face off to the left of Elvis Merzlikens. Lugano in white, Team Canada in red. Here's Genoa, Shea Genoa has a goal in the hockey game. Team Canada up three to one, a shorthanded goal moments ago by Corey Emerton. Two shorthanded goals in this tournament so far. Penalty time is winding down to Hoffman. Here's Pouliot, shooting, stop, loose puck. Picked up by Sanitz, Hoffman out of the box. He's got a break, Hoffman. Waiting, shooting, saved by Fucali, and Pouliot is there to clean up the mess. Under 14 minutes to go here in Davos. We're at the Vale Ant Arena. They say capacity 6,300. I think they've crammed in enough to get to over 7,000 here today in this magnificent old building. Canada, Harlette. Tries to stick handle through and get it to Spalding, but instead, Klassen gets it down the ice. He's in a foot race with number 23, Mark Kadic. Puck is controlled far side by VC Out in front of the net, Fucali is there. Klassen's weak shot is easily stopped. No, Lugano need Klassen, 86, to step up his game. He, like many others this afternoon, have been pretty quiet for the team in white, but look at this shot by Noro right here. 
You're gonna see the pad save, but look, the rebound. You wanna control the rebound right there, but he kicks it right out in front. What I'm noticing from Elvis, not moving quite as well as we saw him move last night against Davos. On the main Jumbotron screen here, they just showed Sean Burke. Over 800 NHL games as part of the management team, goaltending coach in Arizona. Been in the NHL since after the 88 Olympics. He's got international experience. And he has put together a pretty good Team Canada squad here that's leading 3-1 with almost under 13 to play here in period number two. Puck comes to the near corner. They scrum it along the boards. And the puck comes loose here for Klassen. Tries to get it to Martinson, who goes back to Hershey to restart the breakout. They fly the wingers here at the Spengler Cup all the time, so Klassen goes, has the puck to Martinson, and he fires it over top of the net. Chiesa keeps it in, but not for long. It's a two-on-one. Raymond in Paré. Raymond, there's a shot, and it may have went off the bar and out of play. This game is coming to you live from the Vale Ant Arena in Davos. Play is just underway here in Davos, Switzerland. You're watching live pictures of the 80, check that, the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup, an event that began back in 1923 outside and has been played here in Davos ever since. Davos losing to Lugano in the semifinal yesterday, Canada beating Minsk, and we have a rematch of last year's final as Zach Fucali gave up an early goal, but since then, Doug has settled down nicely. He really has. You can see, you know, I, I used to think as a player, goals that were scored in the first minute of a period really didn't matter because you could chalk up the whole host of different factors. And to your point, I think Zach Fucali has adjusted really well since giving up that first goal, and he did very solid in Team Canada's goal. Our second intermission guest, NHL veteran James Wisniewski, starts the rush. Gets it in there for Pat Sackerson. Tried to dangle, it didn't work, gets it back again and fires it into enemy territory. When he tried to dangle, he tried to go by Shea Genway, who's really been impressive on Team Canada's blue line, number five. Skates really well, and there you saw a nice active stick in the poke check on Zacherson. Here's Alessio Bertaggia, he's brought to the ice. Penalty against Canada as Fazzini lets it go. Corralled there by Pouliot, who does not like the call. And we're going to get a power play for Lugano. So as we approach the halfway mark of this second period, Pouliot, who has the goal, is in the box. Power play Lugano. And here, there's no question about it. There's a slash right there on number 13, Alessio Bertaggio, but a, a slash referee standing right there. Now Lugano have to take advantage of this power play. They're going to be keying on 93 Wisniewski, playing on the left point, the right-handed shot. And then the left-handed shot, Linus Klaassen on the right-hand point. These are the two guys. The play's going to funnel through them. It's going to come up to them, look for 93 on the blue end to sh shoot the puck. James Wisniewski made his living in the NHL doing that, and he's being counted on to do the same here for Lugano. Face-off controlled by Team Canada. Lofted down the ice by number 26, Sean Heshka from Melville, Saskatchewan. We've got emails and tweets from people in Alberta, Prince Edward Island, Vernon, BC, Whitby, Ontario, you name it. Under 11 to go here in the second period as Canada quickly again corrals the puck and gets it down the ice and two icings have led to 30 plus seconds off the clock. Here's Burglar with a shot that may have hit Dan Vukovic in front and Karen wide. Dario Burglar, far corner for BC. He gets it to Linus Klassen, being watched by Gregory Campbell, the former Bruin, former Panther, former Blue Jacket. There's a shot by Wisniewski. That's blocked. 
Comes to Dario Bergler. He lets it go. Blocker save there by Fukali. And once again, Canada gets it out and down the ice. Yeah, and that's a good penalty kill for Canada. But Lugano not taking advantage of this power play. No organization coming into the zone and absolutely nothing when it comes to setting up either. Fukali steers that one aside. And it comes to Linus Klassen. We are now under 10 to go in the period. Under 40 to go in the minor penalty. Wisniewski with a shot that's right on as he sets up a one-timer from Klassen, but Fukali saw it and covers up. And we knew the puck was going to be coming back to 93 Wisniewski. This is the play. This is it. Klassen, 86 to Wisniewski. But look, Gardner in front of the net. He's got to get in front of Fukali. Fukali sees his puck coming in. Gardner looking for the tip. He's got to get his body in front of there and block the view of Fukali seeing the shot coming in from the blue line. Once again, the fans here at the Vail Ant Arena making some noise. You can see there, top center of your screen, that's the Team Canada Fun Zone for all the parents, wives, girlfriends, and of course, youngsters enjoying all the action here in our 11th and final game in five and a half days. The sprint that is the Spengler Cup. Comes to Ryan Wilson, the former Avalanche. Luca Fazzini lets his shot go. It ricochets wide and goes all the way back down the ice. Sounds like such an obvious thing, but when you're shooting the puck from the blue line that, you've got three guys down, you've got to hit the net. Otherwise, look what happens. The puck goes rimming around the boards, and Lugano has to go all the way back in their own zone. Loose puck in front of the net is picked off by Gregory Campbell. Cup champion in 2011. Here's Gardner. One last chance here as the penalty winds down, but Canada's Pouliot brings it the other way. It's a traditional three on two. Pouliot to Pare, over to Campbell. He juggled the puck a little bit. It, his shift is now over, he heads to the bench. Under nine to go in the period as Pare falls down and it's picked off here by number 19, Andrew Ebbett. Shot from the point, tipped in front of the net. Pare was there. I don't know if he got a piece of it, but Elvis Merzlikens kept it out. Watch this nice check right there. There's Genoa. I mentioned a moment ago. Great, great active stick right there. You see the way he fought with him. Still stays on. Burglar 87. Nice second effort. And then it allows Canada. You see James Shepard to win that puck. Pardon me. Check that. That was Andrew at 19 to come across and then win that puck and then clear the zone for Team Canada. But a nice job and a second effort right there by number five, Shea Genoa on Canada's blue line. In our opening, we talked about Canada's depth. In our opening, we talked about the goalkeepers. We also talked about fatigue. Remember Lugano, they played late semifinal action last night and they're right back at it here in a game that started at noon at local time. And when I played in the final of this event, we played in the evening, much like Lugano did last night. And then you had that noon turnaround. You hardly have, by the time you get to bed and you wake up in the morning, get the rink, it's less than 12 hours. And it's hard to dismiss the importance of obviously getting good rest. Enthusiasm and energy momentum can only carry you so far. Eventually your body just can't take much more. They all have played a lot of hockey in a very short period of time. Face off is controlled by the team in white, Lugano. Puck came there to number 38, Raphael Sanitz. Speaking of Columbus, Merzlikens drafted by Columbus. Sanitz drafted by Columbus back in 2001. And he spent a lot, obviously, a bit of time in the East Coast Hockey League, played in the American Hockey League, but for the most part, has been a real stalwart over here in the Swiss National A League. Nice. David McIntyre on the draw. Mason Raymond in our first intermission alluded to him, one of the players he's impressed with. Guys that you don't know when you're in the NHL and you come over and Doug, you say, wow, there's a lot of skill over here. We talk about layers in terms of screening. There's layers from certain levels till you get all the way up to the Crosby and McDavid's of the world when you talk about skill in our sports. Absolutely, and you know, it's an interesting point that you touch on. Many of the general managers and coaches have come and taken over this team from North America, obviously, their point of reference is the National Hockey League. So when they look at rosters, they look at the number of NHL games played, and a couple of guys come to mind, the late pack being one of them, assumed that the guys that had had the most NHL games were going to be his most pivotal players. But by the end of the tournament, he came back and we were having a drink at, uh, at the conclusion of the event. He said, you know what surprised me the most was how many good players were over here that really hadn't spent time in the National Hockey League. I think that opened up his eyes, and I think for you covering the tournament for the past two years, it's been much the same for you. The skill levels noticeable, different styles, of course. 
And as Guy Boucher said, that's helped him in Ottawa. Helped him become a better coach and helps him with certain breakouts and systems that you might be able to implement even on the 85 feet across. You just have to do it in a tighter space, but you never know, Doug, if you don't try it. And we play so many tight 3-2 games in the NHL. One skilled play here, one skilled play there could be the difference. Here's Di Domenico in over the line. There's a shot on a one-timer by Max Noro, but I don't think he got good wood on it, and Merzlikens tracked it very well. He did, but a nice pass from Di Domenico. I likes the way that Noro stepped in, activated off the Team Canada Blue Line, even with a two-goal lead. Jacob McFlicker has had a good tournament for Luke Richardson so far. Couldn't corral that puck or he was gone. Instead, Gregory Hoffman brings it in for Ryan Wilson. His shot blockered away by Fucali. Under seven to go here. Championship Saturday. We're glad you've tuned in wherever you're watching in over 40 countries around the world as Hoffman's shot deflects over the glass. This game is coming to you live from Davos. Play is just underway here at the Vail Ant Arena. Philip Fuhr with the puck. Power play for Lugano. Christy Domenico getting a penalty late there on that last shift, Doug. I don't know if you saw it, but he is back in the box. I did. It was a slash of Domenico on number five. The Canadian defenseman playing for Lugano, Ryan Wilson. So power play here for Lugano as Gregory Hoffman brings it in. 24-year-old, lost it, corralled by Team Canada. And Sean Heska gets it out down the ice. And one on two down low, an easy win for Team Canada. And Heska with a hard clear out of the zone. Lugano still unable to get any pressure at all when they get into the offensive zone. Canada beat Lugano last year, 4-3 in a thriller that did go down to the final seconds. A goal here for Lugano would be huge to possibly take just a one goal deficit into the third. That shot is right on, stopped by Fucali and then lofted down the ice by Mr. Shorthanded, Corey Emerton. But even with that rebound in the slot area, Canada doing a nice job boxing out and the hard clear out of the zone. What have you seen and liked about Corey Emerton's game so far? As there was a chance by Klassen. That's blocked by Vukovic. Emerton's done a good job offensively and on the PK as well. I like a lot about him. First of all, he's really smart, but you know what I like? He challenges guys one-on-one. -on -one. I love players that are prepared to do that. Centering feed, bounces back to the left point, kept in by the goal scorer for Lugano, Dario Bergler. Under 15 to go in the minor penalty to Chris Domenico. Here's a chance in front. And it scoots by everybody down the ice and a break for Lugano because had Di Domenico been coming out of the box then, he would have been off to the races. Absolutely, and bad communication again from Lugano. That pass, four guys driving in deep. No look blind pass from behind the net. And as you said, had Di Domenico be coming out then, would have had a breakaway. Paré gets it in, but not deep enough. Trouble for Heshka. Breakaway here for Talbot. Oh, what an opportunity right in on goal. What a nice save. Zach Fucali from in tight. Pouliot brings it back the other way. Under five to go in the period. Pouliot, who has a goal in the hockey game, comes around the net, stops up, centers it. Picked up there by number 25, Max Lapierre, who gets it in deep as we approach the 16-minute mark here at the 2016 Spengler Cup. Lugano desperately trying to get a late goal here. They had a power play chance, but Canada's PK has been very good so far as Di Domenico skates it to center, and Di Domenico chips it in. 
Canada, good job absorbing the pressure. What I like about them, you can tell they've been very well coached. Never losing their defensive posture, always five in front of the goal, doing a great job taking care of the rebounds. David McIntyre wins a battle with Gardner, gets it in deep. Mason Raymond, over 500 NHL games under his belt, has the puck, lets a shot go, rebound in front, and oh my goodness, great opportunity for Andrew Ebbett. Elvis left some trash in the crease that was almost put into the bin. You're absolutely right, Sloppy, but look at this, Max Lapierre, one-on-one -on -one right here with Foucault. Do you see Foucault? Stayed with him. Lapierre telegraphed, in my view, right here a little bit. He opened up his blade, telegraphed the five-hole. Watch right here. And then Foucault read that, closed the door really quickly, but Lapierre showed him the five-hole, and Foucault he didn't bite in Team Canada's goal. 3.19 to go here in period number two. The Tiger Stadium 1984 wave has come to the Vail Ant Arena as that shot by Max Moreau goes off a stick and into the netting. And the message is clear for Team Canada. When the puck comes back to the blue line, you're going to see three guys crashing in front of Elvis versus Lickens. They want to make life as difficult as possible for him. There's a look at a now very warm Doug Honiger in between the benches. It's nice and comfortable up here, but feels like it's minus 10 where you are sporting your brand new parka. Yeah, I, I can't deny it. I, I've been cold the last couple of days. I, th I think two nights ago, I could barely even get the words out of my mouth. It was so cold down here. There's a draft, there's a door just behind me that's been open and closed for the majority of the games. And I'm telling you, it gets really cold down here. So in order to preserve my body, I decided to go with the parka yesterday and again today, and I'm much better for it. Parker to keep you warm. Hot water and lemon to keep me happy. That's the way it works here at the Spengler Cup when you've got 11 games in five and a half days. Double headers each and every day. Here's a chance, they score! Andrew Abbott makes it a 4-1 hockey game. Andrew Evett, number 19, the assistant captain for Team Canada, has been outstanding in this tournament with four goals. Look at this passing combination. It starts with Gormley three. Ryan Wilson behind that, fans on it. But you know what? Mason Raymond stayed with him the whole time. Watch Raymond then win the puck. Head, head is up before he gets the puck. Head is up when he gets the puck. And then he tracks perfectly that pass to, to a charging Andrew Evett, 19. Watch Evett right here. And then the puck just off of Elvis's. Blocker, Elvis versus Lickens, the Lugano goaltender. But Mason Raymond took two looks before he made that pass out to Ebbett, who found the hole in the slot. Real nice job by 21, Mason Raymond in red, and then Andrew Ebbett with his fourth to finish this off for Team Canada. Andrew Ebbett, I'm told by our statistician here, is now the tournament's leading scorer. The Vernon BC native, who I mentioned was never drafted, played for Michigan in the NCAA, and there's a definite NCAA connection with a number of these teams. Seven points, Super 7 for number 19, Andrew Ebbett. As we approach the 18 minute mark of a period of a game, and now of a tournament, Doug, the Canada is really taking control of. Right, and I can hear the bench right now. All three coaches, Gordy Dwyer, Luke Richardson, and Dave King, were very vocal. They're talking about one thing. Finish strong, finish strong. That's a theme coming from Team Canada's bench. Gregory Campbell in the corner. Cycles it to Francis Paré. Has it in the corner, centers it. There's a shot, rebound! Campbell puts it wide as Shepard was in the high slot and got a good shot away. And Campbell doing a nice job. Use his body to win that puck. Quick pivot shot. And Merzlikens with the saving Lugano goal. But Canada doing a really good job working the puck down low. I think there might be a fatigue factor with Lugano. You can see the energy and the strength and the speed is on Team Canada's side now. Here's Paré with a shot. Merzlikens is save. Rebound comes to Chiesa. And he clears it away. Long lead feed. Picked up by Walker. Julian Walker in the corner, cycles it behind the net to Raphael Sanitz. 
As we're under a minute to play here in period number two, Canada once again speeds through the neutral zone. Another controlled zone entry into Di Domenico, but he lost the handle. Di Domenico with it now, out in front. There's another chance for number 19, Andrew Ebbets, as we get some pushing and shoving in front of the net with 42 seconds to go. Canada up four to one. And Ebbett joining 71 Mick Flicker. And again, it's Chris Di Domenico. Watch the puck. Being one down here, 89 Di Domenico. And who's right there again? Andrew Ebbett. A great shot. It doesn't waste any time. Even as a lefty coming in on the right hand side, the puck comes in, pivots his body, slap shot. There's Lickens out to make the save. But Andrew Ebbett is always around where the puck is. So much NHL experience, and that experience is coming through for Team Canada. There's David McIntyre barking out instructions here as Canada setting up off the draw for a quick shot to number 40, Francis Paré. We mentioned earlier the Team Croatia connection with Team Canada. What exactly is that, Doug? Well, Gordy Dwyer, the assistant coach on this team, is the coach of Zagreb in the KHL. And Canada was looking, obviously, to add to their roster, build their roster. Fortunately, the relationship with Gordy Dwyer allowed them to bring seven players to that KHL club. And number 40, Francis Parry, being among them. Well, coaches like players where and with whom they're familiar with. So, we talked about Tom Pyatt playing well here for George McPhee and Guy Boucher. Well, Pyatt ends up back in the NHL with Ottawa. George liked what he saw from certain players on Yekaterinburg. And, of course, as an Islander scout, Anatoly Goloshev was drafted by the New York Islanders and really picked up his game, I thought, at the latter half of the tournament as we're under 20 seconds to go here as Francis Paré gets it in deep getting hauled down there on the play is McIntyre Tony Martinson thought he just fell but big number nine will go to the box not at all you can see the stick right here tied up David McIntyre 42 in red for Team Canada watch right here there's no question about it hooked him down could be called a hooker trip either way Martinson going off for two We have just under 15 seconds left here in period number two. Vic Rutter coming up with our second intermission as a chance in front for Pouliot. McFlicker with a CFL kicker style play out in front of the net that almost worked. Here he is again, but the horn goes and the period is over. Team Canada in control, Doug leading four to one. Team Canada, just as they have throughout the tournament, improving with each, each game. They've done that in this game as well, improving their play from the first. Now into the second period, a complete dominant performance from the team in red. Shots on goal in the period. Officially 14-14 as Team Canada once again dominating in the face-off circle. When we come back, Vic Router, of course, and more here from Davos.
New batteries, boys. Oh, I thought I had a coffee. Dougie, do you have that autograph shot? Yeah. Did you send it? I'm going to send it right now. I wanted to send it. I decided I wanted to send it in the tournament and make it sort of like a, like a, and the love affair, instead of saying the love affair continues, I wanted to make it at the end of the tournament and say, and the love affair continued again this year. So that, it, you know what I mean? Sort of in, as a sign off that, you know, like how big it was again this year. Because that's what I did last year. Whatever you think, yeah. I, if you, I just had time to do it now, that's all. Welcome back to TSN's continuing coverage of the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. I'm Steve Coolius in the broadcast booth. Downstairs in between the benches is Doug Honiger. This broadcast coming to you on TSN in Canada, the NHL Network in the United States, and on the Spengler Cup television network in over 40 countries around the world. We're down to two. Canada against Lugano. Team Canada, full credit, Doug, for a 4-1 lead. Absolutely. The team is just getting better and better. That was an out, maybe their best period of the entire tournament. They were completely dominant. They took the game away from Lugano. You can start to see frustration creeping into Lugano's game as well, but much of that due to the beautiful performance from Canada in the second period. Canada with a power play to start the period. 146 on the man advantage on the fresh ice. I was touched by hearing James Wisniewski talk about his wife and family back home and his, hasn't seen his kids for two months. The love of the game, my friend, the love of the game. It's all about him coming over to Europe, looking to find his game, as you mentioned. Unfortunately for him, only played one shift a year ago in Carolina before injuring his knee. This opportunity to come and play in the Spengler Cup could be the opportunity to jumpstart his career again. Puck cleared to the line, but not out. Pulley out with a shot. Save made right there from point blank range. We have a new goalie that we'll get to in just a moment, but first, Honiger's hunches. Yeah, and I really believe that the winner of yesterday's game between Canada and Minsk was going to be the champion of this tournament. It certainly looks that way after two here with Team Canada. We talk about the improvement of Canada throughout the tournament from game one onwards, and that's usually the sign of a, of a good hockey club. It's what we see from Canada throughout tournaments, regardless of whether it's the Spangler, the World Juniors, or the Olympics, and that's the case again this year, and then Zach Fukali. 
Rebounded really, really well. Gave up a, a goal early in the game in the first minute. And since then, has been extremely solid in the Team Canada goal. Stefan Mueller getting the call here for Elvis Merz-Lickens. That's Stefan Mueller because Dan Manzato is not in the lineup. I don't think they ever thought, Doug Shedden, that they need to give Mueller any ice time in this game, but that is the case as Elvis has left the crease after 40 minutes. And it makes a lot of sense. Don't forget, these teams in the Swiss League, Lugano and Davos, they're going to be playing again on January the 2nd. Makes sense to give Merz Lickens a rest, get him ready for that game, and also affords the opportunity to play Mueller. Puck comes into the center ice area where it's controlled by Brandon Gormley, the PEI native, 24 years of age. We talk about the elephant in the room that is the Golden Knights. A lot of good young talent on this Canadian team and talent that we've seen in this tournament. Remember, Lugano, no Damian Bruner. Talk about NHL experience. Bruner, of course, highly sought after, signed by the Wings. Played with the Wings and New Jersey. 30 years of age from Zurich. Did well in the NHL level. If he had to do it over again, maybe made a different choice or two in terms of contract, but the fact that Lugano, in terms of fatigue and without a sniper like that, have pushed it to the final is still a pretty good result. Absolutely, and they're full value for reaching the final, but I've talked about it several times now. It's a difficult turnaround. You finish last night at 10 o'clock, you get to bed at 1 or 2 in the morning and you've got to come out and play a well-rested and excellent Team Canada Hockey Club. Penalty to Martinson is over. Gregory Campbell carries in or over the line looking for James Shepard. Popped over his stick. Heinrich helps get the puck to Klassen who gets it out down the ice. Never a dull moment in this building, the Vail Ant Arena. Encourage all hockey fans, whether it's the World Juniors, the World Championship, the senior level, or the Spengler Cup, to plan into the future, maybe next year without NHLers at the Olympics, and take a trip to Davos, where we've enjoyed temperatures four, five, six degrees Celsius, sunny skies, and very little snow for the past week. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing. Speak for yourself about those nice temperatures, Steve. I can tell you, it's been nothing like this ringside during the tournament. Puck comes near side for Klassen. He lets a shot go, Fucali makes the save. Peska cleans up the mess, gets it to the line, but not out. Massimo Ronchetti lets a shot go. I think we're going to see a lot more of number six now here in period number three. And it makes sense now for Lugano to roll four lines, as does Canada. Both teams for different reasons. I think Lugano more just to rest certain guys that have had a lot of hockey than Canada because you want to get them, you want to make sure the chips are short and intense and keep driving the pace. I look on the bench and I don't see Elvis Merz-Lickens, I think the shot we just saw was his equipment in the Lugano dressing room. Corey Emerton, former Red Wing, shovels the puck in, gets it back against centers for Spalling. The former Preds draft pick loses it, and back comes Lugano the other way. Zacherson with a shot, ear high. Maybe snag near the collarbone of Fucali and he hangs on. And he's been really quiet for Lugano. Patrick Zacherson coming under the KHL, played on the Swedish National, had a great career in Sweden, but for the most part has been really quiet. And you're right, that shot came up, it was a riser. They just caught Fucali up on the collarbone area. Good job of making the save. The 19 was looked upon as an offensive guy here in Lugano and really hasn't delivered for them, either during their regular season or again during the Spengler Cup. Shot from the point, whistled high and wide by Brian Wilson. The former Avalanche has the puck now. Brian Gardner fills in for his defenseman as the penalty's coming up on the play. Tripping against Mark Flood as he brought his man to the ice. There's Team Key, you'll see it right here. It's Alessio Bertaggia, 13. He tried to spin away from Flood. Flood got the stick caught between the legs. You see it right here. As he caught away from him, you saw that Bertaggia try to spin. Out went flood stick, and off he goes for two minutes for tripping.
Ryan VC, Tony Martinson, Dario Burglar, Linus Klassen, James Wisniewski. Pretty good looking power play for Lugano. If they're gonna mount any kind of comeback, it's gonna have to start right here as McIntyre one-on-one -on -one against Klassen. As a forward, you look down and see a forward on the PK, or on the power play. You start to salivate a bit, thinking you could beat them one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Burglar to the net, scores! Dario Burglar, second of the game. Power play goal, it's now four to two. And Burglar has really been the best forward for Lugano. This is his third goal of the tournament. Shoots the puck so well, open the scoring, and watch him right here. Wisniewski, 93. Seam pass wide, but look at Burglar. This is what you want to see Ford do. Drive the net past Blake Parlett right there. Slid it past Foucault. You see Foucault look behind him. But this is what you want from a power forward. You want to drive the net, which he did. Uses the left leg to shield off Parlett, and then the shot just slid underneath the pad of Zach Foucault. Here's a great look. As you mentioned, it goes under the left leg of Zach Fucali, for the most part, a play and a shot that he, he really has been stopping for most of the tournament. I think that he thought Dario Burglar was gonna go to his backhand and slide it far side, and he was anticipating with the push. So it's a power play goal for Lugano, and it's a little tighter right now. Four to two is the score. Remember, Elvis Merzlikens, Hold after 40 minutes. Stefan Mueller, the left-handed goalkeeper, is now in for Doug Shedden's team. There's a shot. Oh, ho, ho, Ryan Gardner on the doorstep. Tips it right on, and Fucali smothers it. And this is a Lugano team with new life. This is a game of momentum. It absolutely is. You've asked me during the tournament whether I believe in momentum. I absolutely do, because look at the different energy level now with Lugano after that goal by Burglar. Crashing the net, Burglar. Bertaggia, number 13, the shot coming in for Fassini, 17. Big Ryan Gardner right there, 51, trying to stab that puck out of the glove of Fucali. A new life on the bench as well, this Lugano team. 15, 23 to go. Period number three. Regulation time, of course. And Lugano mount to come back. Stefan Almer behind the net, comes out the other side, centers it. Is now Lugano really starting to crush and crash the crease there in front of Zach Fucali. That goal gave them a V8 shot as they're playing with a bit more enthusiasm. Here's Max Lapierre, tries to get it to the point, he can't, and then Paré chips it down the ice and icing against Team Canada with under 15 minutes to play. And the key now for Lugano is make Team Canada work in their own. They haven't had to do much of it. Here's a play earlier on, the goal from Burglar. The key right now is the way he drove it in. Watch him use that left leg in the shoulder to gain position on Parlin. You're right. Lucali might have thought he was going to slide it on his back end right here because the play was to come across, but instead he opened up the blade and then slid the puck underneath Lucali's pad. Dario Burglar, two goals in the hockey game. His 11th year in the Swiss A League. His first with Lugano. 14 goals during the regular season with 25 points. He did play right here in Davos for two years, 2012 and 2013, and posted back-to-back 20-goal -back seasons, Doug. Mark Kadok at center, being watched by Steve Hershey. Behind the net, Hershey bumps him off the puck. Pouliot comes in to help out. Comes to Kadok, back to the point. There's a shot. Never made it through to Stefan Mueller as Blake Parlett let it go. Mark Kadok spinning away from one. Gets it to Parlett near side. 27 years of age from Bracebridge, Ontario. Played with Barry, Windsor, and Mississauga in the Ontario Hockey League. He's part of that KHL connection that we talked about earlier. Tony Martinson stops up, floats one in on Fucali. He easily gloves it and hangs on. It's time for players like Martinson to get going here for Doug Shedden's Lugano team. One player who has picked up his game here in the third period is number 93, James Wisniewski. Another beautiful, long exit pass out of his own zone. Caught Martinson with speed through the neutral zone. 
On the faceoff is David McIntyre, four years at Colgate University, was a fifth round pick of the Stars in 06, and had some NHL playing time with the Minnesota Wild in 2012. Puck comes to the line, but not out. Wilson lets it go, sprawling in front of that one was Sean Heshka. Near side for BC, lockered away by Zach Fucali. Under 14 to go here in regulation time. 90th edition of the Spengler Cup, Team Canada led 4-1 going into the period. Dario Bergler just scored his second of the game. And that's where we are right now, 4-2, as we approach the seven minute mark. Mason Raymond has had an excellent tournament for Luke Richardson. Gets it to Colby Genoway. Back to Mason Raymond, near side. Stops up, falls from his knees. Gets it into McIntyre. Cycles it into the corner, but it's picked off by Wilson up to Gardner and he gets it out. And a good job right there, clearing the zone for Lugano. This game is coming to you live from Davos. Play just underway in the Lugano zone. Picked up by Alessio Bertaggia with speed in over the line, lets it go, and he can shoot the puck. Not many players can score just inside the blue line. It's not a high percentage shot, but he gets it in there, gains a few more feet, lets it rip. He's got great velocity on his shot. Paré in his own zone, chips it out to center. Knocking that one down, number 22, Stefan Ulmer. Plays catch with Dominique Heinrich. Comes to the far side, pumped in by Hoffman and in after it. Number 19, Patrick Zacherson. He has been quiet offensively for Doug Shedden's team in the tournament as Cannon comes back on a three on two. Here's Caddick out in front to Paré, his stop by Mueller, another shot in front. And so far, so good for Stefan Mueller, filling in for Elvis Merzlikens is not allowed a goal. Does a really well executed three on two. Here comes Paré, 40, looking and sees Caddick right here. How about that backhand pass right to Paré? Gregory Campbell also with a whack on it right here, but Mueller holding his ground right there in the Lugano goal. You see Gregory Campbell, 11 here in red. We're gonna get one more whack, the puck just between his skates. And Mueller covering up, but a real nice job of zone entry right there, and I love that backhand pass. Caddick to Francis Paré. Mueller is in for Elvis Merz-Lickens and he covers up once again as you take a look at number four, Colby Genoway, Manitoba native. He and his brother, Shay, both went to the University of North Dakota. And Colton played very well for Luke Richardson. As soon as you get the international exposure, more eyes on you, you need to deliver, and those two have for Team Canada here this week. As we approach the nine minute mark here. Henley coming up against Canada. And Lugano goes back to the power play. And this is not what Canada wants to do right now. They've been Realize that this is a different Lugano team ever since they scored their second goal. And you can see right now, number 26 for Canada defenseman who's played well, Sean Heska. A hold up here. He's got Sanitz along the boards right here. Gets the stick caught up, the arm wrapped around him. The referees have been calling everything. The hooking, the slashing, the holding. None of it has been let go. And now Lugano with an excellent opportunity now. Down by two. The power play is going to be so important. Again, keep an eye now. 93, James Wisniewski, and 86, Linus Class. And the puck runs through both of those guys. Officially on the clock, 10.59 to go. 
Canada up four to two. Trying to make it back-to-back -back championships at the Spengler. Place is packed, the Davos Den, where you throw your money down and they pass the beer up, Doug. What a great place to watch the hockey game. Yeah, they started passing that up, that beer up about two hours before the game. The den was full this morning by about 10 o'clock and people already drinking and having a good time, singing songs and getting ready for this final. BC gets it to Martinson in over the line. There's Dario Bergler, has two in the game. Klassen with a shot right on juggle by Fucali. There to the line, but not out. Wisniewski with a shot. He looked to the heavens. He did not get good compass in on that one. 30 seconds gone in the minor penalty as James Shepard, the former Wild, chips it down the ice. Although he didn't get a lot on that, that shot, that puck had eyes because he got through everybody in front of that. Had it been a bit, probably a foot more to the left, that puck might have scored. We're approaching the halfway mark of the period. Here's Burglar again. The back-to-back -back 20 goal scorer here with Davos. Has two goals in Davos for Lugano and Doug Shedden's team. A goal right now would change the dynamics, Doug, of the rest of this period. It would, and Lugano had four guys deep there trying to win the puck. Was Nuski the only guy back on the blue line? Near side for Ryan Gardner. The Toronto native gets it up to Pat Sacrison. He wanted to go back to Gardner, but it was broken up, and they'll try again. Sacrison. Gains the zone, feeding Gardner far side. Let's a shot go, and Zach Fucali tracked it all the way. And there's Ryan Gardner, the Toronto native, just coming out in front of Zach Fucali, and it's gonna be important for Fucali. Calm right here, and you can see Burglar, he has been the most effective forward for Lugano right here, getting tied up with Team Canada's Brandon Gormley. 9.32 officially on the clock. Every second. Benefiting Luke Richardson, Sean Burke, and the Team Canada staff. Zach Fucali has gone in and is trying to run the table here for Team Canada. McIntyre on the draw, lost the draw. Here's Klassen far side. He's got Fuhrer with him, lets it go. I'm not sure if there was a screen set up in front, but nonetheless, Fucali tracked it and caught it. And there's always going to be a screen. Watch 51. Off the face-off circle, Ryan Gardner in front of that, Pat Zacherson as well. The shot comes out, there's four, there's Gregory Hoffman, 15 as well. Pucks to the blue line, and three Lugano Fords driving, trying to make it difficult for Zach Cali. Twenty-seven seconds to go in the minor penalty to Sean Heshka. Face-off won by McIntyre. Nice play by Blake Parlett. Not to fire it down the ice, but he skates it out of the zone. Tick-tock goes the clock and he gets it into the far corner as we're under 15 seconds in the Heshka minor. And number seven for Canada, Parlett has really killed penalties well this afternoon for Canada. Hoffman in over the line, they want it offside, they get offside. 9.04 on the game clock, five seconds on the Heshka minor penalty. And that zone entry is not good enough. The ice is bad, Canada stacking four on the blue line. Lugano trying too many passes just on the other side of the blue line. They've got to get that puck deeper, either into the corner with the strategic dump or use the half wall sideboards as a friend. But anything just to make the Canadian defenseman have to pivot and go backwards. It's too easy for them when they step up on the blue line and Lugano tries to come in with those little dipsy doodle passes on the blue line. They never work. Under nine to go as the penalty is over to Heshka. But an icing call is coming against Team Canada, so they'll bring it all the way back. Are you sensing, and I know there have been some penalties, but is Team Canada into the typical 1-2-2 defensive shell here, Doug? Well, they absolutely are, but mind you, they're still clearing the zone pretty quickly. When they have puck possession, their forwards are still flying the zone, but they're conscientious. The issue now is just to make sure they're behind the puck and not losing possession. Position, check that in their own zone. But 1-2-2, two, two, they've been a setup team like that throughout the tournament, so that's nothing new. The issue now is not to lose position, but I haven't really seen them, you know, default on their offensive chances either. Number 71, Jacob McFlicker, 32 years of age from Winnipeg, Manitoba. He's had a strong tournament as well. Four years at the University of New Hampshire. His sixth year now overseas. He's in on the forecheck. Puck comes along the near side. Chiesa gets it in, Canada gets it out. McFlicker to Pouliot, has a goal here tonight. Let's it go, blocked by Chiesa. Took that one in the right ankle. Here's Didominico with his patented skating style. 
Former property of the Toronto Maple Leafs on the back check now. Raphael Sanitz gets it in for Max Lapierre. 600 NHL games to his credit, gets it in deep for Walker. His slap pass for Lapierre didn't work. Here's another shot from the point through a screen, and that one is stopped by Fucali. Under eight minutes to go now in period three. Did you see how well Canada protected the house right there? All five guys down low. Shots are coming in for Lua, but the rebounds, either Fucali is going to cover up on them, or Canada does an exceptionally good job just clearing the front of the net. Pucks go off to the side, to the corner, to the boards. Nothing dangerous, no pucks being left in front of Fucali. Talk about what Canada might be doing defensively, it's solidifying the front of the net. Once again on the ice, for Team Canada in the face-off circle is Corey Emerton. Lost the draw, Wilson with a shot, blocked in the slot. James Wisniewski was actually there as Mason Raymond skates it through center and down the ice. Sends it into the near corner where Andrew Ebbett is in after it. Ebbett and Raymond fighting for the loose puck. Just sitting there, comes to Raymond. He's got time, lets it go. But Stefan Mueller is staying perfect here in relief of Elvis Merzlikens. Ebbett behind the net. Gets it in front to Corey Emerton. Takes a shot, stopped. Ebbett into Mason Raymond. Canada using the triangle to perfection here. Third forward always very high and no chances being taken as we are now under seven minutes left in regulation time. It's a perfect execution for Canada right there to your point. Keep that third guy up high, but when you have the chance to work the puck down low, do it because you notice it makes the Lugano defense work hard. The guys were fatigued. Nice job of that line right there. Corey Emerton and Mason Ravens specifically working that cycle down low, playing to their strengths. Puck set center for line is Klassen. Near side for Stefan Ulmer. Cycling in the near corner along the boards. He's bumped off the puck and it's shot down the ice. McIntyre with a nice defensive play, out muscling his man for the puck. McIntyre has it again, lets the shot go. He was going short side shelf, but it went over the glove there of Stefan Mueller. This is what I'm talking about. You still gotta take your offensive opportunities when they're there, this line, McIntyre, Nick Spalling, doing a nice job at Genoway number four. Keep the offense going, and then when you lose control of the puck, make sure you're back in your proper defensive positioning. Colby Genoway has it now, under six to go. Passes to his brother, Shea, who lets a shot go. And peeling off and heading to the bench is McIntyre. Is Canada changing on the fly? Look at the perfect position. The neutral zone. Watch that job by Genway. Forces Bertaccia back. Now it's James Shepard. This is textbook neutral zone play from Team Canada. 21-year-old Luca Fasini, a darling of the Lugano fans, the future of the franchise, a 21-year-old who spent time in the B-League this year. Loses it here, Shepard brings it back the other way for Team Canada. Here's Chiesa, watched by Shepard. Building is hopping once again, let the band play on as Fazzini loses it to McFlicker, who gets it up here to Mark Flood. Flood just curls it into the far corner as we approach the 15 minute mark. The clock ticking down in favor of Luke Richardson, Team Canada and company as they maintain a two-goal lead. And look at the positioning, look at them just standing up. There's Dan Vukovic, 55, holding up on the blue line. That's textbook, textbook neutral zone play from Team Canada's defenseman. Burglar back the other way. Dario Burglar has both goals for Lugano. His shot goes wide, and Di Domenico making sure he doesn't ice the puck, finds open space down the ice. Took his time, put his head up, and saw a nice opening cross ice, made sure, as you said, not to Force and icing, just a smart heads up play from the Canadian forward. Here's McIntyre to Mason Raymond. Comes on the ice with speed, gets it into the corner for Ebbett. These three are back out here again. Ebbett to McIntyre, lets a shot go, might have been a pass for Raymond, and then firing it from the point is Gormley, but Mueller makes the save. Canada up 4-2 with 4-11 to play here in Davos. Patience, 
3.57 to go as there's a scrum in front of the Team Canada net. Zach Fucali made a save on the Wilson shot and then, not surprisingly, Doug, some frustrations from Lugano boiling. You can see 91, Julian Walker dancing with Blake Harlan right there. Surprise, surprise, Max Lapierre drawing with Genoa as well, number five, Shea Genoa. Lapierre's been in the middle of it always, as he was in the National Hockey with that smile, that trademark smile we've seen for so long in the National Hockey League. But to your point, that's exactly what happens. There's frustration from Lugano. Here's the play clear, the, the outlet pass. See, Julian Walker, 91. Stannis, 30, pushing with Genoa. Throws Genoa down right here on top of his goaltender. And then everybody comes in and takes a dance partner. We are going to get some roughing minors, no doubt, with under four to play because there's Julian Walker with a bit of a face wash on number four, Colby Genoa. Last year it was 4-3, this year it's 4-2. And we've got minor penalties here. Raphael Sanitz is getting two. And Colby Genoa is getting two. So at least for Lugano, they don't have to go through the 1-2-2 because we're going to have open ice here, four-on-four four hockey for perhaps two minutes, maybe less if there's a penalty. Absolutely. This is the advantage Lugano wants. They've got some very skilled players at their class and back out there. 86 for Lugano. This provides them potentially with an opening. Canada with a two-on-one chance. McIntyre, he has Ebbett with him. McIntyre to Ebbett, but it just hopped over his stick. Linus Klassen brings it in, stops up. Sends it far side for Chiesa. His shot is blocked. Bounces to Tony Martinson. Leaves it for Hershey. Klassen from his right skate to his stick. Let's a shot go. You can hear it clank off the glass. And a nice play there by Genoa to spin away from the check. Absolutely, Colby Genoa, the spin move, now Canada regrouping. Patience with the puck right here. Look at that, beautiful heads up pass right up to David McIntyre. Canada just taking time off the clock. Here's McIntyre over to Paré. As we approach the 17 minute mark, what a chance all by himself. Number 36, Mark Flood. How is he all alone in front of Mueller? Line is Klassen at center. Drops it for Philip Fuhr. Back to Klassen, back to Fuhr. In comes Burglar to pick it up. Sends Klassen into the high slot for a shot. Well executed play, but that's not going to be for Kelly from there. And it's not, but Canada in the right position as well. You could say it's a well executed play to get the puck back to Klassen there, but Canada perfectly positioned in their defensive pocket right there. Four guys in front. Front of the net, cleared for Fukal, and he saw the shot all the way in from the line. Two thirty-six to go in regulation. Once again, forty-two. David McIntyre on the draw. And once again, McIntyre wins the draw. Warmly gets it near side on a design breakout play. And Ebbett gets it in deep. He's got Noro with him, but he couldn't get him the puck. Nor Noro still jumping in from the Canadian blue line. Activation continues even with just over two minutes to go in a two-go game. A chance there for Hoffman, but offside is the call. As Gregory Hoffman is lo looking for a little bit more from him. National team four, 24 years of age, draft pick. The Carolina Hurricanes, a big shot. I just was expecting more from him during the tournament. There you can see just offside on that play. 2.21 to go on the game clock. 25 seconds in the coincidental minor penalties. Behind the net for Ebbett. He steals it, has McFlicker in front of the net. Reverses it for McFlicker. Has the puck over to Gormley. His shot goes off a stick into the corner. Coincidental minor penalties are now over as Dario Burglar tried a toe drag snapshot looking for the hat trick. Under two to go here at the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. Whistle along the boards, face off to the right here. 
of Zach Vukali. Once again, some more pushing and shoving. And you're down by two. Is this the time to pull Stefan Mueller and go for the long bomb? I think that's the question I can see Lugano. Just and Coach Pat Kershaw conferring with Doug Shannon. That's one of the questions they're going to be asking. And in fact, they're going to take a timeout to make that decision now, Steve. 1.47 to go, and you call timeout Lugano, and we get timeout Lugano. I see Mueller getting pulled to the bench. Do you work it back to Wisniewski? Do you want the puck on Mueller's stick? What would you do, my friend? Oh, what I want to do is I want to have 93. Wisniewski on the blue line, obviously. Gardner 51 in front of the net. Run the puck through 86 plus as well. Make sure Burglar's to the side. One-timers, but he also is a big guy on the front of the net. And then Tony Martin or Patrick Zacherson out there filling out what will likely be six men on the ice for Lugano right now. The advantage, obviously, with where the faceoff is, Lugano is pretty strong in the faceoff circle, and obviously they have the skill right now to maintain possession of the puck, set up potentially strong set of scoring chances. 147 on the game clock. What a great week it's been here in Davos, Switzerland. 11 games in five and a half days. And just like last year, Doug, the tournament has lived up to the hype. And it's coming right down to the end again. Lugano with their goal empty. Face off to the left of Zach Kelly and Ryan Gardner from Toronto taking the draw against David McIntyre. He's been very good in the circle for Canada this afternoon. McIntyre against Gardner. Gardner wins the draw. Martinson to his Nooski with a shot. Steered aside by Fucali. Six on five here. Lugano pressing to try to get back in this game. It's four to two, 90 seconds left. Wisniewski, near side for Klaas and one-timer blocked in front, rebound. Fired wide by VC. Gardner to Hoffman, back to Wisniewski. One-timer for Klaas in. Hits something in front, ricochets to VC. Class and fakes the shot. Wisniewski shot blocked by James Shepard, and the former Minnesota Wild gets it out down the ice. And that takes courage from 88 James Shepard to get in front of that bomb from Wisniewski. We are now under a minute to play here in the final game of the Spengler Cup. Martinson near boards. In for Gardner, looking for Hoffman too far. McFlicker wins the race for the puck and he chops it down the ice. Right, he read that play well, McFlicker. That was a difficult one at the best of times for Wisniewski to keep in the zone, but a good effort on McFlicker's part to get the puck out of the zone. James Wisniewski plays it behind the net to Martinson. Picked off by Ebbett, he loses the handle. Lugano trying to steer it towards the net. McFlicker will just rag the puck, get it off the boards to Ebbett. Andrew Ebbett down the ice. He has Spalding with him. He's hauled down. They score. Spalding into the empty net. 5-2 Canada. The frustration from number 93 right here, James Wisniewski. But it really had to end this way with Andrew Ebbett right here. He has been absolutely fantastic in this tournament. The leading scorer in the tournament, Canada's number one center. Look at him fight off with Noose. He gets the puck to Nick Spalling, who has also had a very strong game for Canada. And then the pushing and shoving after the play, and as a result, was Nooski for Lugano, and here, Christy Dominico, number 89 for Canada, going off. Nick Spalling, 28 years of age from Palmerston, Ontario. Second round pick of the Preds in 07. Didn't play in game one, so they've won every game that Spalling is in the lineup. 437 NHL games as the hockey song is being played here in Davos. Nashville, Pittsburgh, Toronto, San Jose. Playing in Geneva this year. And the relief and satisfaction for Team Canada as they're 17 seconds away, Doug, from mission accomplished. And they're, they're full value for their victory today. They're playing really well. This is just a well-coached team. And you talk about players like Nick Spalling, there's Dave King. He brought so much experience to Luke Richards' staff and James Kuzniewski. 
rightfully frustrated to be on the wrong side of five to two score line. But you talk about players like Nick Spalling. Didn't play in the first game. You told me that you thought he was going to have an impact on this team coming into game two. And he certainly has from game two forward on to game two and forward. He has been just a really, really solid performer for this club. Time is winding down, and this will do it. Canada wins the Spengler Cup for the second straight year and the 14th time all time. Nick Spalling into the empty nets, makes it official. Team Canada winning last year under Guy Boucher and getting the job done with Luke Richardson this year. They lost the first game and then ran the table. Thanks in part to Zach Fucali, the Montreal Canadian draft pick. Second round in 2013. Came in and helped shut the door. And let's be honest, Canada did not play very well in front of Drew McIntyre in game number one. Sometimes you have to go with your hunches in a short tournament. And that's exactly what Luke Richardson, Gordy Dwyer, Dave King did, Sean Burke, I'm sure, in consultation. And the end result was Fucali in front of this defense that was led, of course, by the captain, Max Norold. Montreal native who's played so well. I should take a look at Dave King there with Colby Genoway. Dave King so happy. There he is with the captain, Max Norrell, adding to his resume. As the gloves and sticks are sprawled on the ice here in the area to my right. As we will get the 90th ever presentation of the Spengler Cup. as Team Canada continues to add to its international hockey resume. There you see the hugging. Group hugs, group hugs, Dave King and company. Five to two, the final score. So much still to come from Davos, including some interviews and presentations. Once again here at the Spengler Cup, Canada wins. Final score, five to two. Yeah. 
Spengler Cup ist zu Ende gegangen und wir können auf ein Sportfest von der Extraklasse mit ganz vielen Höhepunkten zurückschauen. Wir sind verwöhnt worden mit einem grossartigen Publikum, das der Foss und der Spengler Cup seit Jahrzehnten Treue halten tut und tagtäglich für eine fast ausverkaufte Weiland Arena gesorgt hat. Mit einem außergewöhnlichen Spiel mit viel Spektakel und hohem Unterhaltungswert dürfen erleben. Wir haben hochklassige E-Sport und top motivierte Mannschaften aus Russland, Tschechien, Kanada und der Schweiz gesehen. Und wir haben vor allem einen Turnierdirektor, einen neuen Turnierdirektor, der zuerst mal den Spengler Cup durchgeführt hat, den Marc Cianola, der das hervorragend gemacht hat. Bitte einen grossen Applaus für den Marc Cianola! Dear Canadian friends, congratulations for the victory. Thank you for coming every year to the Foss and participating at the Spengler Cup. With your dynamic and emotional hockey game, have you been the salt and the pepper of this tournament for years. Thank you all together and best wishes for 2017. spettatori della lingua italiana, cari amici ticinesi, siamo molto felici che siete venuti ad Afos e che siate, se, siete stati nostri ospiti per tanti giorni. Grazie tante e auguri per 2017. Ich wünsche einen tollen Start ins neue Jahr. Verbunden mit guter Gesundheit, Zufriedenheit und einer grossen Portion Glück. Ich danke Ihnen für die Begeisterung und Ihre Freude. Durch Ihre, durch Ihre Unterstützung ist der Spengler Cup das, was es ist. Ein riesengroßes Volksfest. Danke vielmals und alles Gute für 2017. Dankeschön, Herr sind ins Finale vorgestoßen und mussten sich nur Team Kanada geschlagen geben. Wir bedanken uns und gratulieren HC Lugano!
Well, it's celebration and reflection time here at the Valance Arena in Davos, Switzerland. The little kids are celebrating future Spengler Cup, World Junior, and maybe Stanley Cup champion. Celebration on one side and sorry, little girl, sadness on the other. There's Doug Shedden, the former NHLer. Another great performance by Doug and his team at the Spengler Cup as they receive their silver second place medals here. Lugano losing by a score of five to two. Still to come, the presentation of the Spengler Cup trophy to captain, unsung hero, and the catalyst of the Team Canada defense, Max Norroll. 28-year-old from Montreal, Quebec. The medals will come first. And then, of course, the trophy presentation. There's Drew McIntyre. 33 years of age. Shout out to all his friends in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. 30 is Zach Fucali. Waving to friends and family in the crowd in the Team Canada section in the area. To my left. There's a look at number 36, Mark Flood, also from Charlottetown. Played with the Islanders and the Jets. Plays in Austria now. Former Peterborough Peach, of course. Shay Genoway, North Dakota product. There's Montreal Canadian second rounder, Zach Fucali. Corey Emerton's number 25, and what a tournament he had with two shorthanded goals. As the Lugano fans, as is tradition here in Europe, Skate around the ice with the sticks in the air. There's number seven, Blake Parlette from Bracebridge, Ontario. Skate around the ice with the sticks in the air and salute the fans here in Davos, even though they're longtime rivals. And one of the Swiss TV crews has grabbed number 87, Dario Bergler, and why not? Former player here in Davos, back-to-back -back 20 goal seasons and two goals in this game. There's Luke Richardson, the coach of Team Canada. One of the assistants, Dave King. Another medal to go on his trophy shelf. Behind him clapping is Michael Lawrence, who's done an excellent job as the goalie coach at back-to-back -back Spengler Cups. He was here last year, and he's here as well. 89, Chris Domenico from Woodbridge, Ontario. There's some of the wives and youngsters looking on in the Team Canada section. Eventually, they'll all come down on the ice and take pictures as we have the traditional, who started it first, the 84 Oilers or the 86 Canadians, some say 89 Flames. The Stanley Cup picture at center ice. Going into the Spengler Cup next year, the big question is, who will be here? What is happening with the NHL players? And now the presentation of the trophy. 56 is Max Noro. They're calling the entire team over for the official presentation. Canada first joined Spengler Cup competition back in 1984. This is the oldest club team tournament in the world, invitational. To add a little sizzle, Canadians playing overseas were asked to form their own team. Team Canada now has won this event 14 times. There is the Spengler Cup. Here comes the confetti. Let the celebrations begin. Team Canada champions again. Canada wins the Spengler Cup for the second straight year. 
and the 14th time all time. What a week we have had here in Davos. Food, fun, festivities. I can't wait until next year. On behalf of our entire Davos crew, Doug Honiger, great job. Phil Williams on features, our producer Michael Charbonne. I'm Steve Cooley saying thank you for watching the 90th edition of the Spengler Cup. Once again, the final score, Canada 5, Lugano 2. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Excellent work. Let's go celebrate. Bye-bye from Davos. Happy New Year, everybody.